Now, let's see what happens when the government implements a contractionary fiscal policy to decrease public deficit. We know that in the short run that will provoke a negative uh, shift of the aggregate demand to the left because of the de decrease in uh, government expenditure or the increase in taxes, which both have a, ne a negative effect on output. That will also be reflected by a shift in the IS, which will be this movement right here, but then, over time, prices start decreasing. Remember, when output falls, prices fall, and then if prices fall, the real money supply increases, and that provokes a shift downwards of the LM curve. And this shift downwards uh, will uh, reach a new equilibrium right here. So you can see that first uh, we shift the 80 to the left, and then with the decreasing prices, we're moving along until this new equilibrium point, which is this one. But now you have to see that our output is lower than uh, the uh, natural level of output. And that means that unemployment rate will increase. If the unemployment rate is high, then workers have less bargaining power. They uh, ask for less salaries because they can't force em employers to pay them more because employers would just fire them and get another worker for, you know, just lower wages because the environment in the labor market is not too good. And these decrease in nominal wages will provoke a decrease in the, the prices set by firms through costs. So we're right here and now people realize that this price is lower than what they expected before. So they realized that they were actually wrong about their expectations. So they will lower the, their expectations about prices, but that will also affect negatively to their wage, uh, which uh, will decrease, and then firms will uh, have lower costs, and then prices will go down also, but these uh, Lower costs will mean that the aggregate supply will shift to the right. Because this was provoked by a change in the expected price level. And the aggregate supply will shift until uh, prices meet uh, the expected price level again and we are at potential output. So this is basically what happened. In the short run, there is a shift left of the aggregate demand. And then in the medium run, there is a shift to the right of the aggregate supply until this point is reached with lower prices. In the ISLM, after reaching this first equilibrium, we realize that prices keep on going down. If prices keep on going down, then real money stock goes up, and then the LM shifts uh, farther down. That is, the second shift down, until... Uh, output is equal to potential output and we are at a much lower interest rate. So notice that in the short run we had that output had gone down and also the interest rate. You see output is lower and the interest rate is also lower. So after that we wouldn't really know what would happen with investment because it depends positively on output and negatively on the interest rate. But in the medium run, since output is constant, this contraction or fiscal policy that, policy that's a, that actually uh, decreases the uh, interest rate will unambiguously uh, increase investment. So, since output is constant at potential output, and, uh, well, if you take the uh, decrease in G, then the decrease in G will have to be equal to the increase in I for this to be uh, constant. Or if we increase taxes then this is constant and this has to be constant so the increase in I has to be equal to the uh, increase in taxes. So you see that what we're really doing here is changing the composition of aggregate demand because we're not increasing output in the medium run. 
you can see here that what we're doing is lowering the presence of the government and increasing investment by firms. That is, we're uh, increasing the presence of the private sector and decreasing the presence of the public sector. And that is what we call the crowding in effect of the private sector when there is a contractionary fiscal policy.